Turn now to Wall Street's big roll in the new year. The Dow closed at its highest level since October 2007. That's before the economic collapse. The Dow is now less than 300 points away from hitting an all-time high. And meantime, the S&P 500, a broader measure of stocks, ended the day above 1,500 for the first time since December of 2007. So what does this mean for you and your investments? Let's bring in Michael Santoli, senior columnist for Yahoo Finance. Great to see you, Michael. Good morning, Pam. So what's behind this rally, and does it have legs? Well. Keep it the context in mind. Four years we've been ri rising here. We've more than doubled in the stock market since 2009. What's going on is the economy has improved steadily enough for long enough that it kind of feels that way to most people. And I think also these mega, mega threats have receded a little bit. At one time or another the last few years, we either were expecting Europe to fall apart, uh, China to fall into a recession, or the United States to default on its debt. Those things have kind of faded into the background. So I do think there's a chance that now we're back to kind of a normalcy uh, situation in the market. You can roll along, but I do think it's kind of come a little bit far in a short period of time, up more than 10% in 10 weeks. Usually it does not keep yeah, that pace up. Skyrocketing. And what's interesting is that for the first time in a long time, we're seeing the individual investor actually put some skin right. in the game as well, starting to invest their money. Mutual funds have had the best two weeks they've had since 2000. What does this mean for the personal wealth effect we're now seeing in this country? If you've been in the market, the market's already kind of done you a favor by doubling again since March 2009. If you haven't been, I think people are kind of reevaluating, saying interest rates are so low, I have to at least try to participate. What you should keep in mind, this is not early in the run. When you've been rising and markets doubled in four years, it means that a lot of the low-hanging fruit has been already picked. Uh, so I do think that uh, individual investors should probably participate if they've been totally out of the market, if they have a long time horizon. Uh, but I do think that it's going to all depend on whether the global economic growth story that people now expect to happen does actually come through. We don't really know that. Uh, we won't know it for months. And also what's happening in Washington, if they'll have any resolve there and resolution. Exactly. Uh, and one company that hasn't been participating in this rally recently Apple stock down yeah. nearly 40% just the past four months. What's going on there now? It's not the biggest company in the world. Exxon overtook it again. This, uh, Apple has had an amazing uh, year. It basically went up 75% its stock, and then it's lost almost all those gains. Basically, it's disillusionment with Apple's ability to continue this magic of new product innovation, keep the growth up. When you get to that size, it's so difficult to grow fast enough to satisfy investors, and Apple has failed so far. Uh, they've basically been over-earning because now everybody has competitive products to things like the iPhone, and uh, now nobody's really sure if they can, in fact, kind of stand head and shoulders above the rest of the competition wow. for long. A lot of experts would say don't bet against Apple just yet. All right, Michael, right. great to have you on. Thanks, Thank you so much for joining us.